Alabama to 9 p.m. I'm the photographer of Black Milk. I have an exhibition in eight weeks about how things get better with time. Darling Fluffy Kinky inspired me. I'm seeing how the twists blend with her hair over time. How she actually feels more confident. Yeah, She's perfect. really more beautiful every week. That's definitely worth celebrating. Darling Fluffy Kinky. Twists that get better every day, just like you. Beatrice Chetkovic, the fastest woman in the world, becomes the world champion here in Doha. The World Athletics Championships is being hosted in Oregon, in the United States of America, for the first time ever, from 15th to 24th of July 2022. An estimated 2,000 base track and field athletes, representing more than 200 nations, will come together in a celebration of diversity, human potential, and athletic achievement. Short races are not the only attractions. Marathon, magnificent throws. Is it going to be long enough? Oh, it's a huge, huge throw. And outstanding jumps, among other disciplines, is expected as well. Although an immense task awaits them, our own Team Kenya is adequately represented by resolute athletes ready to liven up Hayward Field at the University of Oregon. What a race! What heart! Oh my goodness me! So, so close! Don't miss a single glorious moment live and exclusive on KBC Channel One. KBC Channel One, your true sports partner. Good afternoon. Thank you for creating time for us. You are in time for the lunchtime news. This is KBC. It is the 17th day in the month of July 2022, and it is the home stretch for political aspirants ahead of the August polls. The Azmiola Umoja One Kenya Alliance is in Kibra constituency and in Ibra, in Kibra, and uh, the. Uh, Kenya Kwanzaa is this afternoon in Kiambu. Do interact with us on all our social media platforms at KBC Channel 1. My name is Irene Mchuma Odim on Sign Language Interpretation. We have Lensa Odingo. World 5,000 meters champion Helen Obiri and Margaret Shalimo won silver and bronze for Kenya last night in the women's 10,000 meters at the World Athletics Championships in Oregon, United States. Meanwhile, Ferdinand Omanyala failed to qualify for the finals of the 100 meters after finishing fifth in the semis early today. Obiri clocked a personal best of 30 minutes 10.02 seconds to finish second behind world record holder Latens Bergindi of Ethiopia, who won gold in a world lead in 30 minutes 9.94 seconds. Chelimo dug deep from inside to claim bronze in a lifetime best of 30 minutes. Meanwhile, Ferdinand Omanyala failed to make it to the World Champions Oregon 2022 100 meters final after finishing fifth in his semi final early Sunday morning. Jamaica's Oblique Seville won the heat in 9.9 seconds, ahead of Americans Marvin Bracey, while Canada's Aaron Brown scoped one of the non-automatic qualifying spots with 10.06. In the finals, Fred Kelly finished top, ahead of Marvin Bracey and Trayvon Bromel, who settled for the second and third positions respectively. Curly's under pressure! Oh, and it's so tight! Did Curly get it on the line, or has Marvin Bracey beaten him to the top? 
Supporters of the Migori gubernatorial candidate Uchilo Ayako were forced to scamper for safety after a known assailant lobbed tear gas at a rally in Suna West, Migori County. The coronation event, which was organized by elders drawn from Suna and Suba elders to crown Ayako as the gubernatorial candidate, was interrupted as Ayako was issuing his speech. Toppled chairs and shoes strewn all over. <laughs> campaign event turned ugly. Migori gubernatorial candidate Ochilo Ayako was in Suna West to woo voters and attend his coronation by the Suna and Suba elders. Someone allegedly lobbed Tiagas forcing the crowd to flee. Speaking after the incident, Ayako and his running mate Joseph Gemente condemned the incident and termed it as an act of intimidation and called on the security officers to investigate the matter. For the young people who are, uh, who are used in this occasion, we have uh, identified positively one of them. Uh, that person is a resident of uh, Worth uh, Ogik here in Asuna West and uh, we know where that person is. We are uh, leaving the rest to the police. This is the fourth incident of such kind to happen in Migori. It is not a, a, a disrespect to us as a candidate, but it is a disrespect to the people of Migori. He did not do true to us. He did not scare us. He scared the people of Migori. Last year, a similar coronation rally was disrupted when a civilian lobbed tear gas and fled on a motorbike. All of us who were together undertook uh, to observe peace, to observe tranquility and to operate within the law. We have campaigned for some time now. We are almost the end. And starting this kind of things is going to take us back where Migori was many, many years ago. Migori County Police Commander say they are following possible leads that will lead to the arrest of the suspect. It's so far reporting for Lunchtime News. <laughs> Busia County Orange Democratic Movement gubernatorial candidate Paul Otoma is calling on the political class to stop propagating hate speech as they move around the country wing voters. His plea coming amid calls by a section of the clergy for politicians to champion the adherence of law and order before, during and after the next general election. Busia County Orange Democratic Movement gubernatorial candidate Paul Otuoma warned politicians against propagating hate speech and instead focus on unpacking their campaign manifestos for the electorate. Tuwe wangalifu ile maneno tunazungumuza, iwe maneno ambayo unauza sera zako, ni nini unaenda kufanya. Isiwe matamishi za ingine ya kuleta chuki, ama kueneza uongo na uvumi. And the Tujibebe wa Kenya party leader William Kabogo has received a major boost in his bid to reclaim his seat as the governor of Kiambu County. This is after a section of residents who form part of the minority communities living in Kiambu County vow to support his candidature in the August polls. Tuko hapa na wakisi, tuko na waluya, tuko na wateso, tuko na wakuria, tuko na wakamba, tuko na wamasai. In fact, tuko hata na wakale hapa. Na tumesema kwa kauli moja na hakuna kurudi nyuma ya kwamba sisi watu wa minority tunasimama na William Kabogo Getao. And a section of leaders from Baringo County are in the meantime faulting the criteria used by the United Democratic Alliance Party in coming up with a party nomination list. We are not complaining. We are just making a strong appeal to the nominees while wana chukua pendera ya UDA Baringo that there should be fairness and that promise ya deputy president if what liwe wale wale simama wapewe eh, priority number 2 wale ambao wame contribute kwa chama atutaki tuone mtu ambaye aojulikani ajasema hata siku moja kuhusu UDA ya mheshimiwa mwenyewe sasa Benson Ngunga Milai Kiongozi wetu wa Madhara Constituency in Nairobi County Benson Ngunga Milai of the Wiper Party has pledged to focus on women and youth empowerment if elected the member of parliament for Madhara Constituency I want to give them the highest boost in terms of uh, highest boost in terms of West Fund and uh, the youth empowerment youth and the women enterprise empowerment fund 
so that they can uh, boost their businesses through the SMEs. And a section of religious leaders in Roy Sambo constituency has joined hands in preaching peace before, during and after elections. Message ambao tunahubiri siku ya leo ni kwamba inchi yetu ya Kenya ni moja. Tusiweze kualipu inchi yetu kwa sababu ya viongozi ambao wanakuja baada ya miaka tano. Kwa hivyo, uh, wa kristu wote hawa ambao mnaona nyumba yetu hapa ni wa kristu ambao wamekusanyika hapa kwa lengo la kuombea inchi yetu. Similar calls for sobriety in campaigns were made during an interdenominational service held by religious leaders in game constituency of Siaya County. Election ambayo inakuja, tunaitaka amani, tunataka umoja, tunataka ushirikiano, ukipata moja kati ya mwingine kama kuna neno ambayo inaweza kuleta utengano inaweza kuleta kutafutiana tafadhali ingiana katikati na useme neno ambayo inaweza kuleta umoja Finally Kakamega County Woman Representative Elsie Muhanda who spoke during the start of a two day medical camp in Shinyalo constituency challenged professionals from the Western Kenya region to invest in programs that give back to the community Sisi tunajua mambo ya matibabu iko na shida. Si namna hivyo? Lakini leo kila kitu inapatikana hapa na ni sahi. Kama hawangekuwa hapa, mambo ya macho mungeenda wapi? Sabatia. Na sio ni gharama. Kama ni kutest mambo ya kanza, mungeenda kakamega. And maybe to give an example, those people who are trying to uh, propound their political health care policies they should incorporate this kind of approaches. Safin Aching Oma, Lunchtime News. The Kenya National Highways Authority is on the spot over uh, the delayed construction of the Kwamajini Bridge along Kithimani Matu Road in Yata, Machakos County, amid fears it is becoming a black spot. Last Friday, six people perished in a road accident on the section of the road, and a section of area leaders is now demanding that action be taken against the contractor for endangering the lives of motorists and other road users. Former Yata Member of Parliament Francis Mwangangi says the state of the Kwamajini Bridge has caused the loss of many lives in the recent past. Kutoka Kwamajini ama karibu NYS all the way to Kanyonyo ni watu wengi sana tumewapoteza. Watu wengi wameumea na, wa, na wengine hata wanangongwa wanakufa wanaenda. Mwangangi who is vying as Machakos County Deputy Governor in the August 9th general elections further called on the Kenya National Highways Authority to immediately terminate the contract of those building the bridge. Kazi za serikali zozote ikuwe ni county ama ni national government ikuwe na timelines. Timelines inaanzia wapi na inaanza lini na itaisha lini na which quality ya hii kazi kwa sababu ukiangalia the bridge hii hapa kwa majini hata mtu hajawahi enda shule anaona ile kazi imefanyika hapo hiyo sio bridge ya ina ya kutengenezwa on a, on a highway road last friday six people died while 11 others were seriously injured after amatatu they were traveling in burst into flames following a head on collision with a saloon car the incident led to demonstrations with residents demanding a change of the contractor. For Lunchtime News, I'm Zainab Said. Civil societies and elections observer groups under the banner of Uchaguzi Platform now want the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission to make public the voter audit report by KPMG. They say this will give voters confidence in the election preparations 22 days to the general election. Addressing the media in Nairobi County, the seven civil societies also want the electoral body to update stakeholders on the progress of the case regarding the three IEBC officials who are apprehended in connection to the irregular transfer of votes. They also raised concerns over what they termed as massive misuse of public resources in both the national and county governments to fund campaigns urging the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission to probe the matter. They urged the IEBC to eliminate electoral challenges faced in the 2017 elections, including retesting of equipment to be used in the polls to give the electoral process more credibility. To make the KPMG report public and fast track the, 
the process of sharing the aggregated register of voters for inspection by interested individuals and organizations. We urge IEBC to ensure that gaps and failures noted in the previous exercise are eliminated. The country cannot afford another systematic failure as was witnessed in the first simulation exercise. Cognizant of the 2017 Supreme Court's directions on the electoral technology, which Akuzi platform is concerned about the management and the transmission of election results, as well as testing of the requisite electoral uh, technology. Bodo Bodo operators in Bomet County have received a boost in their business after the county government set aside 10 million shillings for the establishment of a circle for their economic empowerment. Bomet's Governor Hilary Barchok noted that Umoja Sako will cushion the operators from unscrupulous credit bike sellers. Speaking during his campaign rallies in Bomet County, Governor Baruchok lamented that high interest rates demanded by lenders are leaving bank owners in a vicious financial cycle. Multiply a hundred thousand. By the time you are complete, you can come and live a caribou, shilingi, elbu, miatatu. Iyo siyo biashara. Iyo ni kunyanyasa wa toto wetu. The governor says the SACO will provide the Boda Boda community with friendlier financial options that will encourage growth in the sector. Many Boda Boda riders say they have been forced to pay double the amount used to acquire motorcycles when dealing with lenders. Jacqueline Masharia for Lunch the News. The Kenya Women Teachers Association has called on the county governments to employ early childhood development education teachers on a permanent basis as opposed on the renewal of contracts every year. Speaking in Baringo South during a Thanksgiving service, Baringo County Association's chairperson Charity Ngeno said there is also the need to review upward salaries payable to the teachers. She said the 10,000 shillings currently being paid to the teachers are not sustainable. They should see to it that Tumekwa employed on permanent basis. As we know that we are going to follow the schemes of service, the schemes of service is in, and we look forward to Kwamba, Wameweka Walimuwote kwa permanent and pension level basis. This is our ninth year to sign another contract. Na kulingana na sisi tumechoka. We think the county governments were machined on a manena ya walimu wa ECD and we request the national government to take that responsibility as quick as possible. Kulingana na malipo, tunalipua malipoduni, sio kulingana na masomo yetu. Utapata mwalimu wa degree, analipo elfu kumi, whereas anafaa kuwe kwa job group K or J. School heads and teachers have been urged to encourage students to participate in mathematics contests to help improve performance in the subject in schools countrywide. Mango High School Chief Principal John Courier says involvement in programs that encourage studying of science subjects will help students pursue science courses in higher institutions of learning. His sentiments were echoed by Professor Anthony Waititu of Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, who noted that a positive attitude towards mathematics as a subject has seen an increase of students studying science, technology, engineering, and mathematics at university. They spoke during the 23rd mathematics contest attended by 61 schools from different parts of the country. Host Mango High School emerged the winners in the boys' category while Mary Hill won the girls' competition and Joytown Secondary School was ranked first in the special needs category. Uh, to encourage uh, other schools to, to like mathematics so that they can also change the attitude towards mathematics and also perform in the subject just like Mango. One of the challenges we have with the young people at this stage is their, their attitude towards mathematics is usually negative. So in, in such an occasion, it's able to enlighten them and see other people excelling in the mathematics. And with that, they, it boosts their confidence and also the, 
the, the attitude improves. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Maendeleo Yawanawake National Chairperson Rahab Mwilu is calling on the national government to allocate more grants to women's self-help groups to improve the livelihoods of families. Mwilu says scaling up of existing affirmative action funds will ensure more women in the country benefit. This and more in our stories from the county's news briefs. Maendeleo ya wanawake chia person Rahab Mwilu was seen to Andai in Makweni County to donate water tanks to more than 10 women groups. Mwilu noted that water being a basic need in every household, the initiative to provide water storage solutions will ensure proper sanitation in every family, which will in turn result to improve living conditions in, in the communities. You are cheap. Wakati mi waiko na shinda uko Western Kenya. Tunaona wanapatiwa billion, wanasaindiwa, wanarudishiwa ingine. Tunaona grants pia inapeano, coffee, tunaona inapatiwa, inasaidika, tunaona majani inasaindika. Because hiyo vitu hapa akuna, tunataka grants ya hii matangi ya match. In all the communities. Kwa sababu, awana majani, awana coffee, awana miwa watapanda, na hile pesa inapeano grants, ni hile pesa tunalipa kodi. Sisi zote. Not... Meanwhile, tea factories have been urged to consider using renewable energy in order to avoid the environmental effects brought by using firewood. Speaking during a workshop on empowering rural communities and households with renewable energy in Embu County, Elizabeth Njenga from Kenya Tea Development Energy Agency Foundation noted that tea farmers are the biggest consumers of firewood and KTDA is reaching out to train them on the importance of using renewable energy. As much as they're talking about tea husbandry and for them to take care of their crop, um, two leaves and a bud, we want them to also have to understand the use of um, or the importance of climate change um, regarding um, their tea business. Meanwhile, the government is set to fence the whole of Kaptabad forest once rehabilitation of the woodland is complete. Environment Principal Secretary Dr. Chris Kipto, who launched the seeding distribution and fencing of the water catchment area of the forest, said the move will help the country continue increasing its forest cover, which now stands at 12 percent. We have invested more seed centers from one that used to be in Muguga to 18 that will be across the country by end of this year. And uh, we will have an installed capacity of over 300, met 300 metric tons of seed. So I want to inform Kenya that we are now good, at least uh, when it comes to capacity for seed, uh, seedling produ seed production. And the Kanga High School alumni through their association, Kanga Old Boys Association, has fitted the school administration and students with gifts and donations in appreciation of exemplary performance in the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education Examination. In the 2021 KCSE examination, the institution was ranked top in Migori County and 23rd nationally. We were appreciating a total of 30 boys who scored a plane. This has been an initiative of uh, the old boys and uh, they have done it over the years. And I want to say that we, as a school we are very happy that uh, they are doing this and uh, I know they have a capacity to sustain this program. Kenyans have been called upon to enhance trust in good governance and respecting electoral institutions that are legally responsible for the conduct of the general election. Greenbelt Movement Chairperson Jen Gitao says Kenyans must also strive to choose sustainable management of resources through electing leaders who are willing to share resources more equitably. Gitao, while advocating for a peaceful and credible election, urged each Kenyan to plant a tree of peace as a symbol that they will deliberately hold a peaceful general election on August 9th. We should not be tempted to burn our country because of electoral com uh, competition. We must protect it for the current and future generations. Every Kenyan to plant a tree of peace wherever they are is a symbol that will deliberately and consciously hold a peaceful general election on the 9th of August 2022. When we plant trees, we plant seeds of peace and hope.
Thank you for staying with us. Time for Channel One Sports News. Nairobi Karate Association is planning to hold the first COVID, uh, post-COVID karate championships in Nairobi County and it has appealed to well wishers and sponsors to come and support them financially after COVID-19 pandemic disrupted their activities in the last two years. Various karate clubs in Nairobi have already resumed training and are ready to take part in the upcoming championships. Speaking after the training at the Kenyatta National Hospital Hall, Nairobi County, Karate Association Manager Engineer Richard Binga said that the Federation has been facing financial constraint and appealed for support from well-wishers and sponsors as they look forward to popularize the game in all parts of the country. Basically, we are trying to uh, standardize karate uh, in terms of quality. Uh, we were affected by COVID, uh, so most people were training on their own. He said plans to hold the first post-COVID karate championship here in Nairobi later this year are underway and still remain as planned. These uh, diseases, we call them sedentary diseases or lifestyle diseases, the diabetes and cancers, which can be minimized or managed when you you do you are physically fit. It's not a matter of waiting, but it's a matter of preparing them. Because karate, we don't believe on winning, but we need to the spirit of the karate. So we want to bring up the spirit of the karate to come up to where it was. Other leaders also agreed that they are planning to hold more championships in a bid to make the sports more popular in Nairobi County. Apart from it being a sport, uh, the discipline part of it, as you can see, we are not that many of us. It takes a lot of perseverance because a lot of physical training, a lot of concentration is needed here. And uh, that basically means a lot of discipline for, for the young people who are here. Nairobi Karate Clubs have resumed training after COVID-19 pandemic disrupted all sporting activities in the country last year. For Lunchtime News, I'm Daniel Mwendo. An Amran of Communication Authority and Kennedy Mbogo of Kenya Broadcasting Corporation emerged victorious in the 2022 Kenya Communication Sports Organization golf competition held at the Kiricho Golf Club. The golf event was the curtain raiser for the main Kekoso Games set to be held as from the 24th of this month in Kiricho. The Games resumed this year after a two-year break due to coronavirus pandemic. The 2022 edition of the Kenya Communication Sports Games Kikoso are scheduled to be held as from 24th of this month in Kericho. The golf competition, which act as a curtain racer of the main event, was held yesterday with Anne Amram of Communication Authority, won the ladies' title ahead of KBC's Shilia Cheng. Kennedy Mbogo of KBC won the men's title after beating Lazarus Kimei of Kenya Civil Aviation Authority and James Njeru of Communication Authority to the second and third positions respectively. Speaking after the event, ICT Cabinet Secretary Joe Mosheru said that he was pleased with the resumption of the Games after a two-year break due to coronavirus pandemic. People get to jail. And, and and grow the country so not you know not everything has to be work sometimes you have uh, sports which will help both in terms of health help in terms of just connecting people and creating the synergies that are needed. Kikoso Secretary Omolo Asiko said that a total of 120 golfers participated in the golf tournament, while the main games which have been scheduled to commence on 24th of this month. Maybe two years we do not hold Kikoso due to COVID. Our last outing was in uh, 2019, but we are very, very happy to be back with uh, a big golf tournament. Um, after this golf tournament, on 24th, we shall be beginning the main games. The event is expected to attract 14 organizations, which compete in different sports disciplines, including football, athletics, basketball, volleyball, netball, table tennis, snooker, and others. And it is a good start for Kenya in Oregon, the United States. Be sure to keep it KBC Channel 1 as we bring you live the events uh, as uh, they happen. My name is Irene Mchuma Odem on Sign Language Interpretation. We have Lensa Odingo. It is the end of the Lunchtime News. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon.
Kenyan youth have been radicalized into violent extremism by terrorist groups. There are many early warning signs and stages. Seek help from religious leaders. Seek help from NCTC via emergency hotline 0800-721-600. Say no to terrorism. This message is brought to you by the National Counterterrorism Center, Kenya. Be vigilant. Amani Naundugu. Beatrice Chetkovic, the fastest woman in the world, becomes the world champion here in Doha. The World Athletics Championships is being hosted in Oregon, in the United States of America, for the first time ever from 15th to 24th of July 2022. An estimated 2,000 base track and field athletes representing more than 200 nations will come together in a celebration of diversity, human potential and athletic